Objects and JSON. In this section, we're going to talk about the JSON format. We're going to talk about objects and object oriented programming concepts, or OOP. And we're going to build a quiz with JSON. While it seems like there's not a lot of topics we're talking about, there's a lot of depth to these topics that I'll be going into. So prepare yourself and let's jump right in. Understanding the JSON format. So in the previous video, we talked about JSON and we talked about objects, but I want to go a little bit more into depth about them, about the difference and the similarities and how all of that works. So I have here a good descriptor and the code about what is an object and what its values are. Ultimately, everything in JavaScript is either a primitive or an object. So a primitive is something such as like a number or an integer, and an object is something that has properties associated with it. So even a string has properties associated to it. So if I take a variable and the name equals Nick, I can actually do name dot. So this is the dot notation. So then we are accessing either a property or a function. And this has a built-in string function called trim. And what trim does is it trims off excess white space. So new line characters, space characters, anything that would not display anything. So it returns just quote Nick as opposed to quote space Nick quote. So in this case, I'm assigning it to a new variable. If I want it assigned back to the same variable, then I can just reassign it. I also have a replace function. So this is all attached to the string. So this is different than just running a function. So if I had a function replace, then I could say name equals function, and then ick o name. So this would be the functional equivalent. So it's taking a function and then giving it parameters. And this would then return the same thing. In this case, the parameter is actually the variable itself. And then I'm using the object dot replace, and within it, ick with o name. So since my name is N-I-C-K up here, so we had Nick, it's going to replace I-C-K, so it's these letters, with O name, and the value is going to be no name. So that is ultimately how an object works, and then that brings you to JSON. So JSON, what makes it so popular, at least my belief, is that one, JavaScript uses it, and JavaScript is extremely popular, and it's the language of the web, so that's a huge plus. But it's also really, really compact, doesn't have anything extraneous, and it very well describes a whole large amount of different things. So it can hold an array, it can hold an associative array, it can hold a set of numbers, it can hold a function, it can do all of those things, and then it's all essentially using the same notation. So here is a JavaScript object that I am writing it in JSON. And then basically what it's saying is take this stuff and turn it into an object that the programming language and the programmer and the web browser can actually utilize. So my example JSON, I'm giving it a property, and the property is type colon object. So in this case, I'm saying the type is object. Now this is not to be confused with the fact that objects actually have a type of object. And then I'm giving it a set of items, and that item is an array. So here I have the curly bracket, and here I have the square bracket curly bracket is objects, and the square bracket is arrays. So here I have four items, apple, orange, banana, and pepper. And just a reminder with arrays, this is position zero, one, two, three. So if I want to get items zero, it gives me apple. If I want items two, that gives me banana. So accessing the properties, so my variable name dot type. So this is how I get my property of type. And this is how I get the array value items zero. And then I can add a function. So I have example JSON. So I have my variable dot get items equals a function. And that function uses a for loop. So for item in this dot items. Now here we again talk about this. And when you're talking about objects, one of the power of an object is that it's reusable. So in real world, the example I love to give is a car. Anything that's a car has four wheels, a steering wheel, and an engine. And any car that you ever have has all of that. And because we're all trained to do that, and we understand it has a gas pedal and a brake pedal, we don't have to relearn every time there's a new car how to drive. We know steering wheel, you turn left and right. You know that you press the gas pedal, and it goes, and you press the brake pedal, and it stops. So what we're doing is we're defining what brake pedal does and what gas pedal does and all of that. 
But the important thing is, when I press on my car's gas pedal, I don't want every car in the world to go. I want just my car. And that's the best way to really think about using this. This allows me to say, I want a function to exist for every car in the world or every object. But when I run it, I only want it to affect this object that I'm running it on. So this copy of that object. So here I have for item in this dot items, and then document dot get element by ID output dot inner HTML plus equals. So what I'm doing here is getting a div that I have called output, and then I'm setting the inner HTML plus equals. So to append this dot items item. So this dot items is going to be my array property, and then item is going to be the item within. So any one of these. So I'm going to append all of these. And then for fun, I run it right after and let's check. So let's think about what this will do and then check the output. So if I run this, so it's going to say, okay, for this item, I want to go and make a for loop. So for item in this dot items. So this is an array and it has zero, one, two, three, four different keys. So it's going to loop this four times. And the first time, it's going to access the property zero, so it's going to write out apple. Then the next one, orange, run it again, then banana, then pepper. So I should see apple, orange, banana, pepper. And if I check the browser, it says apple, orange, banana, pepper. So we're diving a little deep into objects, and I want to take it a step back into JSON. So you'll see JSON out in the wild, first off, not necessarily used within JavaScript. It has become, as I said, due to its simplicity, it has become widely used as a data storage language. And you'll see a lot of things that are just JSON strings. So a JSON string, this is a string value. And that means it just is a value in itself. I can't do anything with this. If I output this, it will simply say type car runs true, wheel count for color red. So now I have two choices. I could use double quotes on the outside and then single quotes on the inside, or I can use a single quote in the outside and then double quotes on the inside. Quotes look, work exactly the same as parentheses and brackets and everything else. Everything looks for a starting and ending quote and that's where it works. So my single quote will run everything until it hits its final ending single quote. Now, a great question and one that tripped me up when I was first learning development is what happens if I need a single quote? What happened if it's run apostrophe S? Well, thankfully, the IDE is kind of showing that, hey, something's not right. What you can do in this case is something called escaping. So if you put a backslash in front of a character, it escapes that character. Now, the bigger question comes in, well, what if I want to put a backslash? Well, exactly the same thing. So if I need, instead of my type being car, let's just say I need it to be really fancy and it needs to be C backslash A backslash R. Well, I put in a slash, but I need to then escape that slash, so I have to put in two slashes. So there's very few special characters that you really need to escape, and a good rule is don't memorize them, run your code, and if your code explodes, and by explodes I mean gives an error, then try escaping characters. But escaping characters is that easy, so as you see, this would be fine. So now, let's say you get a data file. So let's say you're downloading some code from the internet, or a friend sends you something, or you download a file that has a data set that's in JSON, and you have this string value, but you don't have it as an object. If you want to make an object, so JSON object, json.parse. So JSON is a built-in object that has functions in it within JavaScript. So json.parse, and then you put in the string, and this function returns an object with a JSON. So then I can say, so here I have JSON string type, and then I've got my JSON object dot type. So in that case, my type is car. So if I go back to my HTML, JSON string type car. And let's say you want to reverse that. So that would be taking a JSON object, so for example, the JavaScript object we have, and turn it into JSON. And that function is json.stringify. And stringify will take a JavaScript object and turn it into a string, and then you can output the string or send it wherever you want. There is one thing I did want to point out about the difference between a JSON string and a JavaScript object. So here you see my name is has a double quote around it. 
as well as the value. Whereas here in the JavaScript object, I do not have quotes. Now a JavaScript object does not have to have quotes. So if I do quote type or no quotes, both of these will work perfectly fine in JavaScript. But when we're talking about JSON, and JSON goes beyond JavaScript. JSON is now a structure for storing data that other languages can read as well. So it's more strict. So JSON requires that you have double quotes. And when it comes to values, you can only have a certain set of values. So the values that can be in JSON are you can have true or false, which all have to be lowercase. So in this case, that's true. Or you can have false. So true would not work. True will. So you have true, you have false. You can have null, which means no value. So if you have null in here, that means the runs has no value set. And then the last thing you can have is you can have a number or a string. So a number is just a plain old number, so it could be 4, 4.1, but it's ultimately just a number. And then you can have a string value, so that's red. So here we have this has an object. The JSON string would ultimately, in that case then, it would have yet another JSON string nested within it. But it can't have complex types built in. Everything is pretty much that. And again, that name has to be in double quotes, whereas here, your name does not have to be in double quotes. 